You're in tune to AM 1460 KDWA Radio in Hastings. Welcome to another in-depth program. We have in our studios today a gentleman by the name of Tony Jurgens. And actually, I have to come clean and say I've known Tony for, for a long time. He is running for uh, state representative uh, in the House, uh, what is it, it's Minnesota House 52B, it's actually... 54B. I'm sorry, 54B. It's actually Denny McNamara's old seat. But welcome, Tony. Glad to Thank have you in our studios. Thank you, Dan. Yeah, I think we met about nine, ten years ago. We, I think yeah. the first time was when you and I both... Uh, 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 chaperoned our kids' trip to D.C. and, and right. historic uh, colonial Williamsburg. You were with Zach. That's I was right. with my daughter Alexa. That's right. That was a great trip. That was wasn't that good. And and that's those are the days that we got to go into the White House. Oh right, yes. Remember that because yes. then they shut that. So that had and to the be capital. one. And the state capital, yes. Yep. Um, what year was that? That had to be more than ten years ago. I thought two thousand seven, but I could be wrong. Okay. Okay. Um, but yeah, you're right. It was a great trip. Had a lot of fun. It was. It was. And then we've served together on the Seas uh, Commission, which, by the way, I hear you're chair now. Uh, vice chair. Oh, vice, vice chair. Vice chair of the Finance Council. Okay. Yes. So you're the guy that has to do all the work. I've been, uh, I, actually, I've been uh, chair in the past. I've been okay. a member for about nine years, I believe. Okay. Um, and at one time I served as chair and I've been vice chair a couple of different times and currently am vice chair. Okay. I remember the year I left, uh, Jerry Bamanek was trying and Pat Reagan were trying to talk me into being the chair, but I had been... So you left. I, had <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you'd pick up on that. You're good. <laughs> so I left. <laughs> no, it was actually back then we were working on, we were really close to getting an FM on the air. And I had to spend a lot of time there. That didn't come to fruition, but the le- the latest one did. So good, that's good. good. And congratulations on that, by the way. Well, thank you, thank you. And I'm going to say congratulations on a lot of things that you do for the communities, uh, Hastings and Cottage Grove, because you were Volunteer of the Year. But we'll get to that in a little bit. Let's start back and introduce you to this particular uh, town, Tony. To um, who is Tony Jurgens? Where Where are you from? Where'd you go to school? Okay. Uh, well, I've uh, I grew up in Watertown, South Dakota. Now we won't hold that against you. Actually, you know what? There are a <laughs> lot of similarities between Watertown and Hastings. The towns are very similar. Uh, they have a lot of things in common. One of the things in common is uh, artist Terry Redland. Uh, Terry Redland was born and raised in Watertown. He actually started his career, his his art career, while he was living here on 14th Street in Hastings. Mm-hmm. And then in later years, he moved back to Watertown and built, a, I think it was a $10 million art center that houses over 200 of his original works. Wow. And, uh, of course, Terry passed away just a few months ago. He suffered mm-hmm. from, uh, I believe it was Alzheimer's. Uh, mm-hmm. So we have that in common. And also a lot of the names in Hastings are also common names in the Watertown area. There's a lot of Kranzes, Endress, uh, really? Han, um, Bauer. Those are mm-hmm. all common names. And I learned a few years ago, I always wondered what the connection was, and I learned that, uh, I think it was in the late 1800s, that several families from Hastings actually moved out to the Watertown area, and so there are distant relatives. In fact, there's a town uh, just eight miles east of Watertown where I grew up called Kranzburg, there are so many Kranzes that, that live there and settled there. So now, we do have a lot in common. Do you go down and tell that to Tom Kranz down at Graphic Design? Uh, I, I went to school with him, by the actually, way. Actually, <laughs> we were talking about our, our trip to uh, D.C., and uh, Tom's daughter was on that trip, and I remember telling her while we were on one okay. of the long bus rides. Okay. Well, okay, so you, you were born in South Dakota, raised there, correct? Correct. How did you get to Hastings? Tell us that story. Well, when I, I graduated, first of all, I went to Southwest Minnesota State in Marshall, Minnesota. Graduated from there with a business uh, uh, administration, to, uh, a business bachelor of science in business administration. And following graduation, I, it was late '80s. I was looking for a job. hadn't really, really wasn't finding a lot of success in the Watertown and Sioux Falls area. Um, through a friend of my sister's, I learned of a of a company in downtown St. Paul that was hiring. So I sent a resume in came in for an interview and you know coming from Watertown to St. Paul seemed like a huge city to me at that time and I thought you know this would be good a good place to to work for a year or two get some experience and then maybe move back to South Dakota 
But while I was there, I met my wife, Dawn. Uh-oh. And so, uh, <laughs> and so I've been here ever since. And I would also say that uh, Dawn and I were married 25 years ago today. Wow, congratulations. Thank you. And happy anniversary. Thank you. Wow. So you settled in um, Cottage Grove. Yes. And you run an insurance business, is that correct? Yep, I'm an independent insurance agent. We've lived in Cottage Grove for almost 24 years, and uh, I work as an independent insurance agent, so I uh, mostly do personal lines, auto, home, umbrella, things like that. Um, I've been doing that for about 10 years now. Mm-hmm. Uh, prior to that, I worked for a couple different computer consulting companies. Um, I wasn't highly technical myself. I knew just enough to be dangerous, but I managed the consultants that would go out to client sites and, and, and practice the, the technology. Uh, at that, about 10 years ago, I just was looking for something different, something, uh, a different challenge and ended up uh, going into the insurance field. I wish I would have done it 20 years before I did. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really enjoy it. And it also gives me the flexibility um, for what I'm seeking now with the House of Representatives. I've got full control over my schedule. Uh, I, you know, If I'm behind on something, I can work late at night, get up early in the morning, work weekends, whatever it, whatever it takes. It's not an 8 to 5 type of a job. And so it really works well for both campaigning and, uh, if I'm successful, uh, spending time in the legislature. You know, 25, we're into it, we'll be into our 26th year of ownership of this radio station October 1st. And people say, ask me a couple questions, and I say, well, one thing I regret is that I didn't do it earlier. I wish I'd be saying it was 30 or 35 years, like you say. And while it is a hard work, it's a labor of love. um, And they say, well, what's the secret to it? And I say, well, you just exist. Exactly what you just said, only in a little different way, and that is is that, well, we only work part-time when we own our businesses, 12 hours a day, seven days right, a week. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know, and it, it's hard work, but it's fun work. Well, so now you're in Cottage Grove, and you've done a lot for that community. Or tell us you have two girls, I believe? Two daughters, Alexa and Tori. And I know I've met them both. You've met them both. I met your... Your youngest daughter that came in and did the commercials. Did the commercial what a last sharp week. young lady! Thank you. Thank now, you. does she take after you or her, your mother? Her oh, mother. Her mother. Okay. Her mother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're good, Tony. You're good. Um, so, two daughters. Two daughters. Yes, two young adult daughters. Um, my oldest daughter is engaged. Uh, her fiance is in the Marine Corps. He's actually getting out of the Marines very soon. She's going to fly out to uh, to meet him and and drive back, and and then they'll be in the He'll be in the job market then when he gets back. <laughs> and your youngest daughter works at... Um, she works at daycare here in Hastings. Hastings. Right. Right. So, um, and you also do a lot in your communities, both of them, I should say. Um, you were just recently awarded Volunteer of the Year. Tell I, us about I that. Was. Well, and, and, you know, I mentioned changing careers about 10 years ago. And one of the reasons I wanted to do it is... I wanted to be able to work closer to home so that I would have time to to volunteer, to get involved in the community. Prior to that, uh, I really just I just didn't have the time to do it. And so that was one of the reasons that I decided to make the career change. And at that time, I applied for both. You mentioned the Finance Council at St. Elizabeth Ann Seton. I applied for that at the same time that I applied for the uh, Cottage Grove Economic Development Authority. And I was hoping I would get one or the other. And as it turns out, I got both. <laughs> and I remember Don at the time saying, well, how are you going to have time to do both of them? And I said, I don't know, but we'll, you know, I'll figure it out. It shouldn't be too bad. And as we now know, that grew to several other things that I've been involved with. So you just find the time to do those. Um, I've also, uh, I, I was term limited on the Cottage Grove Economic Development Authority a few years ago. And wanting to stay involved, I contacted some of my friends on the city council in Hastings and said, or in, I'm sorry, in Cottage Grove and said, where else can I, what else, are there any other commissions you need some help with? And they suggested the Public Works Commission, so I applied for that, and I got it. In fact, they made me the chairperson immediately, so my very first Public Works Commission meeting, I was the chairperson leading the meeting. Um, Two years later, there was another opening on the uh, EDA, and having already sat out, I was eligible to reapply, so I did and got it. And at first, it, they made it sound like they were going to make me choose one or the other, and in the end, they, they let me stay on both. Wow. Um, the Public Works Commission has been renamed the Public Services Commission now, and it, it includes public works as well as public safety, 
which gives me an, a broader exposure to you know just many more things mm -hmm. rather other than just the public works side of it. So I've really enjoyed that. That would cover I would assume could assume police and firemen police, and stuff. police fire and EMS and EMS. Right. Okay. You're listening to KDWA's in depth program. Our guest today, Tony Jurgen who is candidate for Minnesota House um, of Representatives 54B. Um, and then let's get to the to the big award that you keep ducking that you should be so proud of. Well, I'm proud and, of it, and I, I, and I do bring it up. I mean, you, uh, but you, what you've done is you've, you've re, you painted the picture of, boy, are you involved. Yeah, and, you know, and one thing after another would pop up, and, and I would be interested in it, and I would say, well, you know, I could, I could probably add this as well. And, and, and uh, as a result... Not only here, or not only in Cottage Grove, but also here in Hastings. Um, you know, we mentioned the Finance Council at Seas, but also I'm the Grand Knight of the local Knights, Knights? chapter, or the Council mm -hmm. of the Knights of Columbus. Um, but I was nominated by uh, someone in Cottage Grove to be the Volunteer of the Year. That's an award that the Mayor and City Council vote on. And uh, we have, uh, in Cottage Grove, there's an annual volunteer banquet held at uh, River Oaks Golf, Golf Course. And... Uh, as they started reading off the accomplishments of the of the person getting the award, then I started getting elbowed from the guy sitting next to me saying, I think they're talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> and as soon as they mentioned C's and the Knights of Columbus, I said, yeah, I'm pretty sure they are talking about me. <laughs> so that was quite an honor. It was a surprise. I wasn't expecting it. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of, lot of volunteers in, in both communities that, that do a lot uh, to help make the, the city and the community stronger. And, uh, you know, to be recognized was nice, but it's it's uh, definitely something that there are a lot of deserving people. Well, but you earned it. This isn't something they give out. You earned it. Well, thank you. I, I Thank you. Um, let's talk about, uh, we have probably about six minutes or so left. Let's talk about your journey to run for Minnesota House of Representatives. How long did that, or when did that all happen? And how did you arrive to, at that? Well, over the years... Uh, my involvement with politics has been pretty limited um, other than the, the boards and commissions I've been on. A lot of them are, are city involved, so you're involved at the city level. Um, but over the years, I've, I've always helped Denny McNamara with his signs for his campaigns, and I've walked in a couple of parades for him and done some a couple of lit drops. But mostly it was I'd help put the signs up for him before the election and take them down after the election. And I think because of my involvement in both cities, both Hastings and Cottage Grove, um, it lends itself well, I think, for for this district, for 54B. And uh, so it did come up sort of short notice. I wasn't really planning on this, at least for now. You know, Denny had asked if I'd ever be interested in doing something like this when he's ready re to retire. And I thought, sure, sometime in the future, but I, I really didn't know that the future was going to be this year. Um, and then over Memorial Day weekend when he decided he wanted to spend more time with his family, um, and so very last minute, I went to the Secretary of State's office and, and filed the paperwork to run. And like they say, uh, from that point forward, it's been like drinking out of a fire hose. It's been uh, a very busy summer. I've enjoyed every minute of it. But uh, I'm really finding out that it takes a lot of hard work. Uh-huh. And we were kind of talking off air a little bit about it, that it's a continuous, especially the house, end of the in the state of minnesota it's every two years every two years i mean that's a lot of you have to do a lot of work continually right and, and even in the off year um like we were talking about you still want to be in the parades you still want to be out at, at some activities um it's just never ending so mm -hmm. you have to enjoy it mm -hmm. okay um we have just oh a few minutes about two and a half minutes left here or so tony let me ask you the question, why should the people of Hastings and Cottage Grove vote for Tony Jerkins? Well, first, Dan, as we're wrapping up, I want to just say thank you again for inviting me in to visit with you and giving uh, me a chance to, to, for the people to get to know a little bit more of who I am. I've worked hard to make our communities stronger by volunteering on the different boards and commissions that we've talked about, and I was honored to get the Volunteer of the Year Award in Cottage Grove. Everything I've done has been to make a difference to make our communities stronger. But the selfish reason is that I also enjoy it. I love the diversity of the, of the responsibilities and the diverse group of, of people I get to know and get to work with. I want to be your next state representative so I can take that involvement to the next level, to represent you, represent your families, represent your businesses in St. Paul. I'm working hard to earn your vote, 
I've been knocking on thousands of doors throughout our district in Hastings and Cottage Grove. I've talked to many of you who have shared your concerns with the uh, escalating cost of health care, the frustration that the legislature and the governor let party politics get in the way of finishing their job. There was a bonding bill that would provide funding for roads and bridges, maintaining buildings at the U of M, money for the infrastructure to keep our water safe, and that bonding bill also included major fund or funding for a major project in Afton that includes a wastewater treatment facility. It had bipartisan support, but they let politics get in the way and it didn't get done. When I'm in the legislature, I'll take a balanced approach. I'll work to eliminate wasteful spending, to protect your tax dollars while making the needed investments in education, roads and bridges, and services for veterans, seniors, and disabled Minnesotans. I'm proud to have the support of, of retiring state representative Danny McNamara, and I've also been endorsed by both labor and small business. The most important endorsement will come from you, the people living in Hastings, Ninager Township, Denmark Township, Afton, and Cottage Grove. Your endorsement, your vote on November 8th is the endorsement that matters the most, and I'd be proud to earn your vote. Dan, I just want to thank you and KDWA, and I want to thank your listeners for tuning in. Well, thank you, Tony, and how can folks learn more about you? Thank you for asking. They can check out my Facebook page, uh, Tony Jurgens for Minnesota House 54B, or go to TonyJurgens.com. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Dan. You've been listening to KDWA's in-depth program. Our guest today, Tony Jurgens, who's running for state representative for Minnesota House 54B. This is AM 1460, KDWA, FM 97.7.